What's up guys, welcome back to Mac Merlin. For this episode, I'll be reviewing the KBP V60. But not just any KBP V60. This is the Type R Polestar Edition. Coming right up. Special thanks to KBP for sending this to me. But don't worry, I'll still be giving my honest opinion on this. So you may have heard this name before. The S and V60 Polestar have evolved. You're right, it's the name of a car. So what does this car and this keyboard have in common? I have no clue. So let's just begin this review. The box is fairly minimalistic, and it's practically just a cardboard box with the KBP logo on it. I think this is the same logo as the other V60 keyboards. However, on the side is where you see the rest of the specs. V60 Type R Programmable TMK Atmega 32U4 Pole Star Edition. Contents of the box include the keyboard, a USB cable, and that's pretty much it. The manual was all provided to me digitally. So I've actually owned another KBP V60. It was the Matthias Quiet Click Edition. I absolutely hated it because it felt cheap. I'd type on it. It just didn't feel good at all. I sent it back after a week. And since then, I've gone through so many keyboards that maybe my keyboard tastes have been more refined. So when I got this, I'm proud to say, I'm, I'm glad to say that it felt a whole lot better and I have a good impression about this. Taking a look at the front of the keyboard, you'll see that the keycaps are all backlit compatible. But unfortunately, they're only lasered ABS. Though on closer inspection, it looks as though they are just coated black, kind of like Corsair and Razor. The legends are positioned right over where the LED of the switch should be, giving it a good amount of backlighting. Though on the longer prints, such as caps lock, you see that the C is not quite evenly lit. You'll see that the keycaps are all standard layout. No funky bottom row here, so hooray for that. The keycaps also seem to shine very easily with minimal use. I found myself having to wipe them down after every use. So if you look at the back of the keyboard, you'll notice that this is made of transparent plastic. And you can see the badge, four rubber feet, and a hard reset button. Despite having only a plastic case, there's very little flex in this keyboard. I think it's because it's not only because it's 60%, but it's got a metal plate as well. So basically, you have two sets of LEDs on this keyboard. You have your single color in-switch lighting, and you have your RGB underglow LEDs. This keyboard has some complicated lighting schemes, so I'd consult the manual for all the details. Basically, on your in-switch LEDs, you're able to change the brightness and the breathing frequency, and for the RGB underglow LEDs, you can increase or decrease the R, G, or B values, and also change into breathing mode. The stabilized keys on this keyboard have a lot of rattle. You can hear it a lot on the backspace, on the enter, but thankfully not so much on the spacebar. For a keyboard that cost over $100, there really shouldn't be any rattling or squeaking on, on any of the stabilizers. That's just unacceptable in my opinion. But the good thing though is just with a little bit of dielectric grease, you can fix that problem. Taking apart this keyboard isn't like most 60% keyboards you see on the market. They've got four screws in the back and one in the front. The one in front can be accessed by removing the G and H keycaps. Two of the rear screws are hidden behind the rubber feet. If you want to see where the screws are, you can look at the plate and see where the hexagon patterns are on the plate. Unfortunately, this means that if you want to swap out your case, you'll only be able to secure your PCB and plate with only three screws. So it might not be as secure, it might not be as stable as the rest of your 60%. I don't have the right tools to do a thorough examine of the PCB, 
so I can really only judge workmanship. But from what I can see, there's no extra solder and there are no burn marks on the PCB. So I think they did pretty good on this. But now, here is one of the biggest selling points about this keyboard, especially for enthusiasts. It uses an Atmega 32U4 microcontroller, so you can program this using TMK. TMK is keyboard firmware written by a fellow named Hazu in 2013, which allows you to program each individual key on your keyboard. You're able to change your layout, put in function layers, toggle buttons, you name it. This doesn't work on every keyboard, but a large amount of community-made boards are supported. If you want to learn more about TMK, I've included some links down below in the comments section. If this is your first time programming, don't fret. KBP has provided instructions on how to program your brand new Polestar. So unfortunately, the documents provided to me were wrong in so many ways. I had to contact KBP again and tell them, hey, this step doesn't work, that step doesn't work, can you give me better instructions? And they followed through. If you want to see a copy of that documentation, I've also linked it down below. So the actual programming of this keyboard is in another video. It's going to be in on my top left over here. But don't go there yet. It's time for Glamour Shots. So due to my experience with the Matthias Quiet Click version, I had low expectations of this board, and I was just expecting it to be a paperweight with a light show. Thankfully, it's not. If you're on the fence between going the custom route or just looking for a keyboard off the shelf, this is a great compromise. First of all, it's 60%, and you can swap out the case to any 60% compatible case out there. Just be sure that you don't sacrifice seeing your RGB underglow LEDs and be sure that you're comfortable only securing your PCB with three screws. Once again, that's the middle screw and the screws on the left and right of the PCB. And also, this keyboard is fully programmable. Personally, I think all 60% should be fully programmable. Sure, you've got the Poker 3, and you've even got keyboards with a dip switch, similar to the original KBP V60. That's really not enough. Like, this, this is awesome. Notice load up TMK. You can program any key to anything you want. You can set up macros. You can do toggle switches. Yeah, this is a great step forward. The only thing I wish that they would have done is maybe given us switch cutouts and we could also swap out the stems. That way it would be both software and hardware customizable. Anyway, thanks for watching this episode of Mech Merlin. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, make sure you comment down below. And if you like this video, hit that like button. I'll see you all next time. Whether you're looking to purchase your first mechanical keyboard or just interested in this niche hobby, you're at the right place. Welcome to Mech Merlin, where all my keyboard adventures are broadcasted to the world. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for the next video.